out after this mm-hmm. boys room start. Okay. Hey guys, we're back. Um, for this, I just said hey guys, so we're gonna say hey guys. That's kind of weird. Hey girls, we don't discriminate much. Um, at all. So um, today we're gonna be talking about another one of our favorites that we mentioned um, in our previous video, and that's going to be Rosario the Vampire. Because it was one of the ones that we overlapped on, we decided to do it first. Um, we're gonna start things off a little bit lighter. We're not gonna go for the dark stuff just yet. We're probably gonna do maybe a couple of comedies, and then we'll talk about something dark, um, which will either be Phantom or Black Lagoon. Probably gonna be Black Lagoon. Because I still have to watch Phantom, so I'll probably get on that. Yeah. So um, I'm gonna start it off with I'm gonna tell you guys kind of the plot. So um, as I mentioned before, it's a standard harem style, which if you guys know what that means, it, you know what it means. And if you don't, let me tell you real quick. Basically, um, it's about one guy who gets surrounded by a bunch of girls, and um, they're all vying for his affection in one way or another. Um, so, the main character that we're going to talk about, I'll go more in depth in him in just a couple of minutes, but um, his name is Skune Alna. Um, so, main thing that I want to talk about with this story is that it's about a guy who basically flunks his high school entrance exams, um, but his dad ends up following this weird, robed nun who drops um, an application, basically, picks it up, and discovers that there's no test to get into this school, so he gets his son into the school. Well, the son ends up going to the school, obviously, and um, basically it's a school for monsters. And um, they range from literally every kind of monster you can think of and pretty much every kind you haven't. Um, <laughs> there's some in the show where you're like, wow, that's weird. We'll get into what kind of monsters and stuff like that later. Um, so, and he... Um, basically ends up having this kind of long ordeal because humans aren't allowed at the school and um, they're supposedly supposed to die the second they foot step in the school or step foot in the school um, but for some reason it actually doesn't bother him he can go there um, and he's absolutely okay um, so um, it's never really explained as to why it's just he's there um, and also the monsters are also being told that humans are been portrayed as evil beings and that's why also why they don't like humans as much. Um, mainly because if you think about it, like, what kind of stories do we tell about monsters? You know, we say that, you know, basically we just have stories on how to kill them. Um, and, you know, they fear that, like, that's the same way people will be. Um, so instead of, you know, them being the monsters human beings are, which is kind of a subplot of the story if you really look at it. You can dive into it a little more if you want to. It's not super important. I mean, there's definitely situations where it comes out, especially towards the end of the first season. Mm-hmm. Um, which... You know, we don't want to spoil everything, but just, you know, keep an eye on that. Um, so, I want to go into the characters now. I don't want to give too much away in the plot. Um, so, the first character that I want to talk about, like I said, his name is Skune Alno, main character of the show. Um, he's kind of a know-nothing guy. I mean, he's there's nothing really special about him. He's not super athletic. He's not super good looking. He's just kind of an average guy. Um, and the funny thing about it is that he ends up going to the school, and the first person he meets um, is a girl named Mocha Kashia. And uh, she is a vampire. Um, anyways, he is just astounded at the school itself, and, um, he's really scared at first, which is definitely justifiable and understandable. Um, but kind of throughout the show, he definitely progresses, he kind of finds his courage, he, um, definitely does some pretty insane things for the people he cares about, um, which is really, you know, it's really kind of endearing of him as a character. Um, so that having been said, without going into too much detail about him, um, next character I want to talk about is Boca. Um, there's two halves to Mocha, so we'll talk about her first half that you see in the show, then we'll talk about the second. So the first half is what a lot of people end up calling Outer Mocha, and Outer Mocha is a very... An innocent, innocence, I would say. Yeah, she's kind of a betrayal of innocence, and, um, even though she's a vampire, she's never drank human blood before, but, um, she does drink Skunes in the very first episode, and that's kind of how they become friends in a weird way, is, um, you know, she ends up just loving his blood, um... It's done very comedically. I mean, it's not like, you know, scary movie monster, but, you know. Anyways, so the, the reason that we say she's the portrayal of innocence, though, is because the second half of her, which people call inner mocha, is who she really is truly supposed to be. Now, um, we find out in the show, and this is kind of the only spoiler I'm going to give, is that her father was the one that basically locked this more dark side of her away in a reflection upon her mother, who is the outer mocha, um, so that the world would find her more appealing. Um, so she wouldn't be as harsh. So what ended up happening is Inner Mocha developed its own personality, or sorry, not Inner, but Outer Mocha developed its own personality and, um, ended up being what most people know and love, um, with the few friends that she does have. 
and the inner mocha is locked away by a rosary that she wears around her neck consistently. Um, it's the name Rosario Vampire. That's the name. That's where it comes from. Um, so whenever the rosary seal is removed, um, the truth. Yeah, I'm basically quoting the the show says every time it comes off. But anyways, whenever it's removed, um, her inner self comes forth, and um, she's a total badass. There's really no other word for it. I mean, she basically can defeat anything and everything because she's just a vampire and she's what's considered an S-class monster, which are super rare, super tough, super strong. I mean, they're the terminator of monsters in this world. Um, and she kind of just kind of takes over the school with Skune and everyone's kind of afraid of her, but not. Um, there's like hush whispers about her later on. Everyone thinks she's really gorgeous, though. Um, which kind of leads us to our next character that gets introduced, who goes by the name of Kurumu. So, so Kurumu basically is... What, um, what we call a succubus. Basically, a succubus is a monster that's able to hypnotize men and to do whatever she wants. And basically, she sees that this... She's able to hypnotize pretty much everyone at the school. Um, and then she sees the new guy, um, Skune, and she sees him with Mocha, and she gets jealous and wants him all to herself. And eventually, it gets um, to the point where they, they have to put aside their differences and they, they get along. That's a summed-up version of it, but... They get start getting along, and she starts liking um, Skune, um, and she tries to not use her powers and actually try to win his heart the old-fashioned way, and wants her wants him for her. And it's really funny because the way she talks about herself and how she how she's like, oh, my body is like this, you can't resist it, and it's like in a very comedic way. So you're just like laughing because you're just like, yeah, there's girls like I've met that talk like that, and you're like, wow, you're an airhead. Get out of here. But the way it's done with her, it's very comedic, and she ended up being one of like my most like favorite characters on the show. Not just because of the way she looks, just because of her comedic um, chops on the show. It was really well done by the voice actress. Um, so the next person we want to talk about is Yukuri. Yukuri is introduced in kind of an annoying fashion. She's basically, what she is is she's a witch, and witches, even in this kind of school that she's in are basically considered, like, the next worst thing to humans, and that's just because they are humans, but they can use magic. Um, and that's what sets them apart and allows them to be considered monsters. Um, and Yukari is, I believe she skipped three grades, and so she's much younger than everyone else on the show, and she has really no friends at the beginning of the show. Um, everyone kind of hates her because she's super smart. I mean, um, usually in Japan, school grades are posted and kind of where you are, they kind of show, like, how dumb or how smart you are. It's kind of harsh. Um, and Yukri is literally number one in her class. She's basically the valedictorian of the class. Um, and she flaunts it. She's totally mean about it. She has no sense of humility. And if someone does something to upset her, she either plays a nasty prank or she does something inappropriate or, you know, she's, she's very immature about things at first. Um, you know, things happen in the show. I won't say exactly what, but basically she um, also starts to spurn feelings towards, um... Skune. Skune. And... The show can character with her kind of develops in a really cute way. It's almost sisterly. Um, so Especially when you know she has no chance. But Yeah, and, you know, um, that's something we'll talk about maybe towards the end of the show after we get kind of an overview of our total rating of this show. Um, and that's kind of, you know, important for later. Mm -hmm. So, right, For sure. Um, the next girl that was introduced, but she was introduced really... She was introduced in the first season, but she was really introduced a lot later like episode eight or nine and it's kind of like when you kind of think oh these are going to be the three girls no there's a fourth one her name is misere and basically misere is a stalker she um she is very she's kind of an outcast she doesn't wear the school uniform at all she kind of goes by her rules and basically she develops feelings for skune but she does it like in a weird way she always does what stalkers hide behind trees but she likes Skune, so she's part of the group. But then she'll randomly pop out of nowhere, be like hiding in a vent or come up behind a tree. It's kind of like, it's funny, but in her powers, it, she's an ice uh, ice witch. And basically, um, she can... She can control it. and manipulate ice in pretty much every way. And, and that's what's like really funny is that like a lot, every time she gets like feelings, she gets like really like warm and steam starts coming up because she's all, you know, she's cold. And then basically the steam is making her like warm up a little bit every time she's around Skune and I always thought that was really cute but even though it's like she was probably one of the most funniest characters I think on the show because 
She, you just didn't know what she was going to do. She just did the most random things. And she would just kind of pop out of nowhere. I mean, literally there's an episode where she comes out of, like, an air vent in the ceiling and everyone's just amazed. Or she'll pop up, like, behind doors when they go to closed doors. And it's just, she's either a ninja or some kind of master of the shadows. I mean, no one knows how or where she got these crazy skills until you meet her mother um, in season two, which, trust me, you look forward to that episode. It's hilarious. <laughs> um, anyways... Um, the next character, um, we were debating whether or not this character was a side character or a main character. Um, I think we came up that she, you know, she was in it enough to where she, I could consider her a main character. She comes up in um, season two. Her name is Kokua, and she is Mocha's younger sister. And when you first meet her, she is very mean, and she will remain that way throughout the pretty much the entire show. Well. Uh, I think something though to bring up in this one when you say that she's mean though is she's kind of mean for the right reasons. I think saying she's mean is maybe a little bit undercrediting her character. She's just she's sad. She's really more sad than she is mean mm -hmm. because and she yeah. has no one else really to take her anger out. We don't want to go into too much detail why she is angry, but she is angry at Mocha and Tsune for some reason, and we're not gonna go into it a little bit more. But then she also has her partner in crime, and his name is Co Buddy. And if we you... won't tell you who Co Buddy is, we. But the point remains is that um, he's in pretty much every episode of the entire show before you even realize he's there. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind. You're probably able to figure it out. We've given you enough hints just now that it's pretty obvious. Um, so I think we're going to talk about the side characters now. Mm -hmm. And the first side character we're really going to talk about is Ruby. Um, Ruby is another witch that is introduced in the show um, towards the end of season one. Well, I, I think, think like the last I think it's, two episodes. I think it's, no, I think it's like the fourth to last or something like that because um she plays a very crucial role in kind of the ending um finale of season one um you have to find out for yourselves um but her character is also kind of comedic in the sense that she's always doing odd jobs around the school because the director is having her do it and she has this line she always says and people actually start imitating her lines and her character gets really sad and sad like sad and mopey because she's um she can't say her line anymore mm -hmm. um uh, we consider her a side character because while she also has feelings for Skune, you kind of find that out in a side episode that's really not plot-driven. It's more just, like, bonus things. It's not an OVA, for sh per se, but it's definitely, like, unimportant to the real plot of the show. It would just built that she wasn't in it enough um, to where, like, she be, she could be considered a main character, where we thought, like, Coco might have been a side character, but she was pretty much in it every episode of season two, compared to where, like, Ruby was in it every episode. Well, Ruby was in it in every episode, but she literally had, like, a line. Like, or she'd make, like, two appearances in the entire show. I mean, she was really, really unimportant. And didn't really, like, factor into the story that much. Like, she was just there really for comedic relief. And... Or she'd give really crucial, like, plot points where it's like, oh, no one else would know this, but Ruby happens to. It's it, it's honestly almost kind of annoying that she knows these random things that just everyone else is a, a complete loss for, but she knows them. Um, and pretty much in every... Uh, anime like this, there's always that one friend that's a little bit perverted, and that's a little, they're not so much friends, but there's this guy, and his name is Gein, and he is the president of the newspaper club, and he is a werewolf, where I don't think there is any other werewolves in Rosario. Right? There's no other werewolves mentioned. Something else to mention about werewolves, there are one of the other um, S-type monsters that are listed, um, except for being super strong, they're super fast, so that plays into things, too. Mm -hmm. Um, so basically, he's the only werewolf that we know pretty much of. In the anime. Some of you other who have read the manga can be like, wait, I think there's a werewolf in the manga. We're not talking about the manga. We're so. talking about the show. So basically, Gein is, uh, he's a more, he's very much comedic relief and very much of a pervy loves taking what we call panty shots and... There are a lot of panty shots in this anime that yeah. we forgot to mention. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in the overview. Um, just yeah. as, we, we talked about the plot a little bit, so when we give it like an overall view of the anime, we'll bring up some points like that. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe things to look out for, are things, you know, just be prepared. <laughs> for sure. Um, I think overall, um, for the character development and characters, these are some of the funniest characters I've seen in an anime, just how... Well, they 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 just mesh with each other because of their powers and how they're monsters and stuff like that. And overall, I think I give it a nine. Just how well they just they work with each other. It's really 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 good. As far as character development for me goes, I definitely feel like the characters grew a lot in the show. Um, they de they grew in understanding. They grew in emotional levels. Um, 
pretty much every episode where there's a new girl introduced, um, Skune and Oka go through some kind of growth, um, which is pretty common. And then every episode after that, whenever there's some kind of trial, um, they always find their way out of it, and they all seem to grow in that way. Um, so I'm giving it a 9 as well, um, strictly for character development. So um, we'll got to keep that in mind. Um, so next thing we're going to talk about is the consistency of the show. This show really pissed me off with its consistency. Um, and I know I said I love SAO, and you guys are looking at me going, that's one of the most inconsistent shows in anime. We'll talk about that. We'll get there. Um, Eventually. But for, for this show in particular, um, I felt like the school year jumped around a lot. Like, the show is in one half of a semester, then it's in a completely different semester, and it's kind of confusing in that respect. Um, there are indications of, like, when the seasons are passing and things like that, but I feel like maybe a little bit more definition of time going by would be really, really helpful in the understanding different aspects of the show, especially towards, like, the season resolutions at the end. Um, so I gotta be really upfront with this one. Um, I love consistency in shows, and this show just really didn't have it for me, so I'm giving it a two, which is pretty low on our scale, obviously, so. Um, I think you gave it a seven, though, on this consistency. Oh, no, I... I wrote two down, but it looks like a seven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, we have little notepads. We cheat. Actually, no, I take that back. I take that back. I just switched up my scores. Um, that's for a different part of it. You're right. I gave it a seven. I totally stand corrected. Thank you, Stefan. Um, I, I think I meant to maybe give it a little bit lower of a score, but I think I was trying to feel generous towards the show. So I think I will give it... I, I, I think I'll give it a five, actually, on this, just because I think that maybe it's... I was being a little too generous now that I was being a little bit too harsh, so I'll, I'll, I'll meet in the middle. I'll give, I'll give it a five. I give it a six point five just straight up. It's where it's like it's not horrible, but it's not anything really you've seen that's really been outstanding in like any of the great anime that it's considered today, uh, which is like a little disappointing. Which I thought maybe the show could have provided a little bit extra something extra, but it didn't. So I give it a six point five. Um, so then we come to the only thing in here, which I already kind of gave away my score on this, but the topic at hand that we're judging this time is the resolution of the show. And um, something that anime is notorious for is that if it doesn't get funding, it's basically just canceled. I mean, it's just gone. Um, it can end in the middle of the story, and we have no idea what's going on. And that's exactly what this show did. Camper. Um, yeah, Camper. That's another one we'll talk about, but that's that's for adult-only kids. Um, but anyways, so with um, the resolution of the show, I definitely feel like where it ended, the show had just gotten way more interesting in the la in the season two and they just didn't do a season three and i was just so annoyed they were supposed um, to be you can clearly tell that there was supposed to be a season three and the fact that not. there wasn't i mean it really ate at me just kind of because i'm a big reader i love reading stories and i need to know the end of them like i will stay up till four o'clock in the morning to know the end of a book if i have to um so when i was watching the show and it just flat out ends and it's obvious there's supposed to be more. It just it kind of ruined the flow of the show for me, and it really I, I really didn't like it there for a little while, um, just for that reason. So like I said before, I'm giving this one a two, um, just because it cut off right when things were supposed to get interesting to the point where I actually did read a little bit of the manga, um, and that also made me even more angry because it gets so much more badass. So yeah. I think overall for the resolution, it left at a point where you look at it where it's like, okay, I kind of know where the characters are going to go from here a little bit. So, I mean, it ended at a point where I was like, I was disappointed it ended that way, but it left at a point where I was like, okay, it's not the worst ending I've seen where it just totally, like, there was supposed to be one more episode, they didn't put it in. There were, I mean, this is where the season two was supposed to end. So, at least I'm happy they finished out the season. So, I, I give it all, I give it a, a five um, for overall um, resolution, which is not very good, but it's definitely, like I said, not other ones that we're going to be talking about have done that, and that just really hurts me too. Yeah, we're, we're, we're this is definitely a show we're probably both going to give a one at as far as resolution goes. We'll talk about that one later, um, just because it basically aired two episodes of a second season, and it stopped there. Um, but that's no. that's that's once again for another time. Um, so. Our overall score, um, for mine, technically... You broke up into two parts. I, bro I broke mine into two parts because I feel like from someone that reads a lot, from someone who like loves storytelling and seeing stories, I couldn't give this one a high rating because of how it ended. So I technically give it a five. But here's where I make my, um, make my peace with the show, shall I, shall I say. 
Um, I give it, for a sheer enjoyment quality, I'm going to give it an 8. And that is solely because, even though I know the ending, I know that it ends the way it does, I still can laugh at it. Like I said in our previous video, I can still watch an episode, I can still laugh my ass off, I still have a great time. Um, I love showing this anime to new people because they usually end up watching it in like a day or two um, because they just have to burn through it because it's so funny. Um, so I really have to say, like, it's definitely worth watching. I mean, we kind of told you that the show ends in season two. We didn't say how or why or what, for what reason. Um, but you guys know that there's no season three now, so I think you're going into this one a little bit more prepared. Um, um, so if you want to go into that like that, um, you maybe could just skip it if you just like you're like, oh, I want to have a resolution. Go ahead and skip it, but I definitely recommend if you want some good laughs and replay value of this, where you can just go back and you watch one episode because you've seen the whole thing. Definitely watch this one because it's like you you like the characters a lot, and you definitely can see the funny moments between them and enjoy it. It's really really good. So um, one thing I'm gonna say is kind of the last thing. I want you guys to comments in the comments below. Obviously, there's nowhere else you can. Um, if you guys don't understand the ending, I mean. It's not really well explained in the show, um, and that's part of where why I read the manga is because at the last episode you're kind of like, how did that happen? So um, let me know if you guys want to know the ending. Um, I'll put a video up um, where I'm talking about it, um, just because it can be kind of weird. So um, you know, if you guys don't want that, fine, just say so. Um, if you do, once again, let us know. Um, once again, I said this in our last video, I'm going to keep saying it until we really get this down pat. Please be gentle. Um, <laughs> we're, just trying, we're, we're, we're just trying to give you guys um, an enjoyable experience. It's kind of maybe, if you saw, heard about a show or you want to find something new to watch, um, we're just trying to do our best to give you guys overall views. Um, it's annoying because we can't tell you everything we want to talk about with these characters. Because we want it to be an experience for you. And which also brings me to where uh, I was not able to get my score towards the end. Oh, God, I cut you uh, off. I feel like a jerk now. But it's okay. Um, I, get, I get overall, um, I didn't break mine into two scores. Um, I pretty much gave it overall enjoyment and overall uh, anime. I give it a 7.5. It, it definitely is not groundbreaking. It's nothing, like, different. But I think it's just the comedic is what's different about it and how a lot of the characters kind of break the fourth wall every once in a while and I think that's what's really what gets to me it's just it's very clever humor where it's just like oh it's not, it's not like toilet humor which is where so I've seen a couple of animes where they are toilet humor but this one is a rare not a rare occasion but it's definitely an anime where it, you could probably watch with like almost anybody um, except maybe not your parents but pretty much like any of your buddies or any of your your, maybe your girlfriend or your friends that are girls. It's whatever. Just I think cause it's it's a, not a family. As I would say that's not where I want would use. Yeah, I, I wouldn't use this as a family episode. This isn't like the original Sailor Moon, you know. Um, yeah, but, that's kind of pushing it. <laughs> <laughs> that rides the line, too. Um, actually, most animes, I mean, like, even Spirited Away is like, oh, that can be bad. <laughs> so, um, anyways, we're, uh, we're going to kind of end it here, unless there's any last things you want to say, because I already cut you off once, so I'm not going to do it again. Penny shots. Yeah, that is the one last thing we forgot to mention. So, um, actually, there's two things I want to talk about. One of them is Kuromu's boob. Kuromu's boobs. So, there's a lot of boob jokes in this show. Keep that in mind. Um, Kuromu is a succubus. If you Google the word succubus, you're going to see pictures with women with really big boobs. It's just kind of the character. Um, so just once again, you know that going in now. Um, so panty shots. Basically, um... The show opens with a panty shot. Yeah, and it's, it's honestly done comedically. I mean, it's not meant to be sexual at all. Um, I think a friend of mine kept a tally on how many times we saw panties in the show. And I think there's, what, 26 episodes in the show or something like that. It's not that many, but I think there was a good 400 panty shots or something like that in the show. Like, they were they were everywhere. I mean, it took every excuse possible to make them. Um, it, it was, like I said, it was done comedically. I mean, there's nothing about it where it's like, you know, cover your eyes. Mm -hmm. um, but it's definitely, like, there's, there's, a, there's a ton. <laughs> it's everywhere. Just be warned. Yeah, so... Uh, 